As we turn to God's word this morning, let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, may your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, your greater glory our supreme concern, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some of you will know that uh, I grew up in North Hampshire, but across the other side um, in North East Hampshire, in Four Marks, which is just south of Alton. But uh, my family's home is really Medstead, the next door village. And um, when, when I came back to work for the diocese eight years or so ago, I bought a house in Medstead. And it was interesting to see how the village had changed in all those years since I was a boy and uh, going back uh, just recently. And one of the ways in which the village had changed uh, is that they had planted a number of vineyards. Hattingley Vineyards is quite a big business now in and around the village of Medstead. And every morning I used to walk my dogs out the back of my house, across a field and into the vineyards because they loved the, the space they had there just to run around. And there are a number of things that uh, I remember from, from the vineyards. One is how straight the vines were, how, how straight the rows of the vines were, and how much space actually between each row. You could drive a small tractor down between each row to mow between them. An unusual thing that I remember were some big heaters with lots of gas cylinders. So if there was a, a, a late frost, late April or, or May time, they would turn on these heaters at night to make sure that the, the young shoots on the vines didn't get frosted. I've no idea how it could work across a whole vineyard, but that's what they had, these big blowers with um, blowing out uh, hot air. The other thing I remember is, is how every year uh, a band of people would come in to prune the vines and they would cut them back really hard, selecting two or three young branches which were going to produce much fruit and leaving those and pretty much cutting back all the rest of the vine and building these huge bonfires of, of sticks which would be burned. Well, in our reading today, our gospel reading, Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. And what is the gardener's job? Jesus says to prune the vine, just as uh, the vines in Hattingley Vineyard were pruned every year. So God prunes the vine, which is Jesus, and he prunes the branches, which are you and me. And he prunes us for the very same reason that the vines in Hattingley were pruned, so that they would produce more fruit, so that we would produce more fruit. What does it mean for God to prune us? Well, it must mean that uh, he teaches us, that we learn to change as we read his word, and that we therefore bear fruit. What does bearing fruit mean for a Christian? The reason I chose the passage from Galatians, of course, is because it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. If we want to be fruitful Christians, then the characteristics that we need to show in our lives are those characteristics which St. Paul lists in Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The closer we are to Christ, the more we are abiding in Christ, the true vine, then the more our lives, hopefully, will show those very characteristics. It's worth just saying them again. Of course, we could uh, do a sermon on each one of them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's worth learning them off by heart, just so you remember 
this is how God wants me to live my life. But there's another side to bearing fruit, and that is being an evangelist. That's about sharing the gospel with others, bringing others to know the love of God. Of course, the two are not disconnected, because when we share the message of Jesus Christ with others, we don't do that just by what we say. We do it by the way we live our lives. If people can't see any truth in the way we live our lives, they're not going to be interested in God for themselves. So it's very important that we do live out our lives in the fruit of the Spirit, so that what we say to people about Jesus is backed up by the way we live. We say that we have to share the gospel in both deed and word. Deed and word. Sometimes we say presence and proclamation. Sharing God's love is about presence, the way we live, and proclamation, the things we say. And of course, the missionaries when they went uh, out to Africa and other places, realized this very quickly, that they couldn't just preach the good news without doing something for the people they were speaking to. And so many of the hospitals and the schools uh, that were built were built by the first missionaries. That's true even in this country. Over half the schools in Hampshire are church schools. They were founded by the church. That is part of sharing God's love in our community. Jesus says something which is a bit of a mystery here. Well, I think it is. He says, abide in me as I abide in you. He asks us to abide in him, but he wants to live in us. And, of course, Jesus lives in us through the Holy Spirit. That's how he comes to live in his followers. But he says we must also abide in him. It is a mystery. How can both be true? But they are. We abide in Christ. He abides in us. That's the way he wants us to live our lives. And it's by abiding in him that we become more fruitful as Christians by sticking close to him, by reading his words, by prayer, through learning what it means daily to serve Christ, that we become more Christ-like and so bear fruit in our lives. Think uh, for a minute about that picture, the picture of the vine, which you saw at the beginning of our service, and how many uh, bunches of grapes there were on that vine. Three years ago, I was asked to pray for the vine harvest at Danebury. Danebury is uh, a manor, the other side of Andover. Uh, it's a private house and a private vineyard, but my nephew was the head gardener at Danebury. And so he got me to come and pray for the vines as the harvest began. And what they'd done, they'd invited a hundred or so people, mainly friends uh, of the, the owner of the manor, to come and harvest the vines. And Naomi and I were there, and we spent a glorious morning in the sunshine, cutting off the bunches of grapes and putting them in these big containers uh, from where they were then put on the lorry and taken uh, to be pressed. And we got sticky uh, all down our, our arms and our hands, but it was it's just an amazing time to see how fruitful vineyards can be. The, the, the juice was almost running out of the grapes as we picked them. They were absolutely ripe for harvest. And Jesus says that's how he wants us to be, in a Christian sense, absolutely fruitful for him. And the way we do that, as we've said, is to abide in him, to stick close to him. What happens if we don't? Well, it sounds a bit harsh, but he says that we're cut off 
and thrown into the fire. But I want to ask you to think about this. What would it have been, what would have happened if one of Jesus' disciples had decided he didn't want to be a disciple anymore and he'd wandered away from Jesus and the others? If he'd left the group? Well, he would have missed all the teaching, wouldn't he? He would have missed all the comings and goings, the people that Jesus met and the things he said. The other disciples would be learning lots and moving forward, but he would be going nowhere. And so it is if we don't stick close to Christ. It's like a, a hot coal. If you remove a hot coal from the fire, it very quickly goes dull and cold, doesn't it? It needs the fire uh, to keep it hot and, and red and glowing. And we need to stick close to Christ if we are going to be fruitful for him. We must abide in him if we are to fulfill uh, what we are called to do as Christians. And if we abide in him, he says, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now that's a difficult saying, if ever there was one. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. It's a topic for another day. Suffice it to say that I don't think prayer is magic. I think what Christ Jesus is saying here is the closer you stick to me, the more you will know how to pray. The more you will know my will and what to ask for. Again, he's saying, stick close to me, abide in me. And if we do, then we will be praying that we will bear fruit, because it's in bearing fruit, he says, that God is glorified. It is in us demonstrating God's love in action that he is glorified in our world, that others come to know him for themselves. Mother Teresa is one of the greatest examples, isn't she, of God's love in action. The way she would pick up the destitute and the dying from the streets of Calcutta and give them dignity and respect and hope in their last days. And she used to say that as she did that, she imagined it was Christ himself that she was caring for. God wants us to treat others uh, with respect and dignity and care in our society, in our communities. He is glorified through that and through us bearing fruit for him. So to sum up, Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. You will abide in me. That is our call, to abide in Christ, to be living branches, drawing our strength from the vine, the true vine, Jesus himself, that we may bear fruit in the world. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we pray simply that in all our comings and goings, in all our work, our rest and our play, we may stick close to you. We may abide in you and you in us. Amen.